23DB Production Studios in the Garden State, New Jersey, this is the Art of Music Tech with your hosts, Fela and Dennis. Let's go, let's go, let's go, and welcome to the Art of Music Tech podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Fela. I'm here with Dennis. Hey guys, and we're here with <laughs> Jeff Bova, part two. In sunny California, part two. Yes. We uh, last the first part, at the end of the first part, we finished kinda around the the uh Celine Dion era and the the ultimate prize, the album of the year prize. Uh <laughs> and, and the Grammy right behind you, Fela. Yes. Look, yeah. The right. Grammy is right there. Yep, right over my shoulder. Um so that happened. That's you know, arguably probably one of the, the top prizes in, in, in what we do. Um, what happens after? Yeah, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> it's a journey. It's a journey. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Of course. It's, yeah. it's always still uh, up and down, absolutely. But, you know, no matter what. Absolutely, so, yeah. Take us on that journey. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So at that point, getting validated as part of an album like that, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I was looking for ways both to produce and having done a lot of arranging too uh after that album they cut down on the on a number of producers and they just kept it centered around i think like david foster and uberto gattaca and for a few albums with with Celine at that point so I, I i would come back and do some arranging on some of the songs for uh for the for the writers and all that so uh didn't get involved in any production with her after that point Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really exploring other stuff. I, I worked with Blondie, produced the track, uh, track for them, and uh, I kept getting the signals from the universe to work with, to write with, and work with like new artists. Like, mm -hmm. how do you really break in or establish like a foundation as a as a as a producer, and, and with the ch the business totally changing at that point? Uh, you know, how do we how do we continue to work and uh you know have a a viable career and i, I it all kind of happened at the same time a big shift for mm -hmm. me so i had to really look closely at what i was doing and had to like we were talking in the last segment I had to like call upon everything that i had known between playing live composition orchestration songwriting programming arranging all that and use it to uh, you know, find my way through all the changes in the business, mm -hmm. which led me to coming out uh, to, to California. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We, we were we were meant to do a, a, a Bad Out of Hell two album, a Bad Out of Hell three album. I'm sorry, uh, and in with uh, meatloaf. With meatloaf. Yeah. But at the time, uh, we 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 probably were looking at maybe a couple years of solid work to do one of those those albums. Mm -hmm. It took two years to do yeah. uh, Bad Out of Hell too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those yeah. are it historically was, known as long albums. <laughs> yeah. Oh, totally, totally. <laughs> I've seen enough behind the music, so. <laughs> yeah, you know, because when somebody says, "Oh, we're going to work on a song today," you're actually working on the equivalent in time of possibly three songs. So, yeah. so it's not the simple. You, you've got that many more minutes of, of work to do on uh -huh. stuff like that. So. Uh, they ended up between health issues that the guys were having, uh, it it was they they basically canceled it. So I was kind of sitting looking at a big open time there where I, I was really needed to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and you moved to L.A. right? By yeah, that I moved, time, I moved I moved to L.A. after that. Yeah, yeah. So I came out and just found my way here. So it was it was great to sort of like reinvent myself. At the same time, I had my sort of past credentials to, to build from. So it was a little bit of everything when mm -hmm. I got out here. And started out doing some string arrangements for uh, some of the, uh, some, a, a bunch of different projects. And they were still recording live strings at the time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, I still do, especially for film, but, you know, uh -huh. the budgets for albums, uh, they, they were still... They were still having live string sections, so so I got to uh, even have the honor of sharing an orchestra with Paul Buckmaster a couple of times mm -hmm. when we were doing arrangements. Several several arrangements would share an orchestra for an afternoon, and uh, we'd all come in have have them do our our charts. 
and then next arrange would come in and do the other songs that they were they were working on so uh uh got to got to share the group with them and got to be around the master because that's paul buckmaster was my hero growing up uh-huh. i mean uh just amazing and, the, and to yeah. look at his charts firsthand it was just a, <laughs> just astounding learning I mean, from the master oh yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, and, and incredible. So, uh, you know, it was, it was, yeah, we're about a year. I think pa- he passed away a little over, yeah, a year ago. Yeah, oh. yeah, oh. yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so they started reducing the budgets and our mock-ups, that was the thing, was doing string mock-ups, first programmed of the arrangement so the producer and the artist could hear it. Before we went and cut up with the live orchestra, and and film composers work that way, these days is having a, having a full mock up uh, mm-hmm. using samples, so uh, the director can hear the full arrangement, know exactly what it, what it is. So at that point, they can just go in and record it, yeah. and not have to make changes and everything like that. Yeah. On you know on the session itself. Mm-hmm. So uh, using that same model, doing that with uh, uh, with projects like that. So it was going well. The mock-up sounds really close, and we don't have the, the you know, the budget to be able to have a live string and let's the string section. Let's use that. So, they started doing that on a on a on a load of records. For for a number of years, I was working with Iron Maiden doing program strings uh-huh. on their albums. I think the first one I worked on was Blood Brothers uh, when I was still in New York. Uh-huh. And I just heard the other day that's still the fans. That's one of their big legendary <laughs> tracks. Uh, uh-huh. You know, so being in the metal world was interesting. But yeah. it, but with strings, because I had a I grew up around you know classical music and uh-huh. you know and the composers that the metal bands are kind of are impacted by whether you're looking like Mahler and and Wagner and stuff like that uh-huh. you know <laughs> it's like just adapting that to the orchestra uh-huh. and you think about even like Michael Kamen with Metallica uh doing the the San Francisco uh San Francisco Conservatory Orchestra I think he used uh, uh-huh. uh he had them do the Metallica album playing with the band uh-huh. so uh, uh it's a great pairing of uh you know yeah. of worlds there you know and, and to me really and you know the that that influence uh, with with metal but with uh uh with that so i, I started doing a bunch of pop records with mm-hmm. uh with with virtual strings and um for for a lo- number of years i've been doing like the iron maiden albums with producer kevin shirley so he uh was producing uh joe bonamassa and beth hart they were doing a duet album of old like like blues standards a lot of them had string arrangements including some claire fisher arrangements which are the most astounding string arrangements on planet ever written for for that that whole genre and they wanted to uh duplicate some of those arrangements Mm -hmm. so uh so i i I did a i did i think six or seven songs on that album Uh uh with with all virtual strings Uh and uh you know that that was that was really working the technology, uh-huh. but I, uh, uh, I tried to treat it like I had, you know, a real group in front of me, mm-hmm. and and built and built the tracks that way. So we've continued to do other albums together. Right. We've done a, did another uh, like a couple of years ago, did an eighteen minute long piece, and it was my preparation with Meatloaf and Jim Steinman, an eighteen minute long uh, Iron Maiden piece. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which was tempo map, by the way, including we're going back to the technology we spoke about in the last segment. Yeah. Is th- th- it was the same thing, which is interesting. It came back, and I knew exactly what to what do. do. Was they did live piano in the segments that they could build the composition on, and they had 18 minutes of this live piano laying laying down the entire format of the song. The band played to the live piano, and then I had to make a click track to that. And then I programmed the orchestra, the orchestration to the yeah. uh, to the band. Yeah. 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 So that was all in Pro Tools. Yeah. So I, I tempo mapped in uh, in Pro Tools. Yeah. Which does it beautifully. I'm so glad that that carried over. Yeah. And uh, half and the uh, time, well, probably a quarter of the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> is, the same is doing thing that. Done. But uh, I've been farming that out though. I have a couple of guys here in town that that'll oh, do tempo hey. mass for me. Oh boy, that part that part of the brain. I uh, know, know it's yeah. not even worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get somebody to do it. It's like boom, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, 
but uh, but that that I have a load of load of fun doing. You know, yeah. it's, it's really having a virtual orchestra at your fingertips when you can't have a a, a live one. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, playing in that world is was you know one of my dreams. You know, back in the day, uh-huh. and the experience of playing in in orchestra in school and stuff like that. There's there's nothing like it. Yeah, you know, everybody should have that experience of sitting in the middle of forty uh-huh. pieces plus. Yeah, and know what that feels like. You know, it's like. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. It's, it's Even a mind blowing. In, in band for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just being, yeah, in the middle of it and playing it and hear, yeah, it's a different perspective of hearing the instruments that I, I don't think you get even as a an audience member. You yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah in fact, I think uh, engineer Frank Filippetti was experimenting with that where he was placing microphones on the player's headsets. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. I did mm-hmm. see yeah, yeah. that video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Recording that instead of, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's deep. That's deep. Hey, you know. That's, uh, yeah. Capturing that vibe. But yeah, so uh, so that, that, that's been something I've been doing a, a, a lot of. And then a uh, the thing that's been really interesting lately is is um, working on a project where we've been using a lot of instruments from Indonesia and Asia mm-hmm. merged with uh, with cinematic pop, global cinematic pop. Mm-hmm. And so I, I've been learning about both gamelan. I've been learning about all these Eastern instruments and the different percussion instruments because the artist is incorporating all that into, into the music. And gamelan is a is a genre. It's uh, it's an it's a well gamelan music. It's an or is an orchestra using this family of instruments, and they call it a gamelan. Uh, yeah, I've just been learning about it, so I'm new. Okay. And, and pardon anybody who knows more about it than me. <laughs> pardon me if I don't don't quite get it right. But like an orchestra, uh-huh. there are these percussion like instruments made with brass out of brass. Uh, either brass bars for the higher pitched ones that look like you know marimba or vibes, mm-hmm. and they uh, traditionally have seven note five or seven note scale, and you play them with hammers, and that would be the higher instruments like say like the violin section, and then you go into the different families of them bonang and uh, um, I'm sorry I, I don't remember the other names uh, yeah, of yeah. them oh, and, yeah. and different kind of gongs and. They all play together as an ensemble, which is considered gamelan. Uh-huh. And uh, so most people know the gamelan as as these seven note, five or seven note instruments you play with hammers that are uh, very. Uh, they have these really rich atonal kind of harmonics to them. Really interesting. Yeah. And uh, so now they've been the composers have been experimenting with uh, Western versions of them that are uh, are have twelve note scale that can play all twelve. 12 notes and so you can, you can pair them with uh, with western instruments so uh this artist actually is have, having just had one built for her up in san francisco there's a guy who builds the american gamelan which is a chromatic gamelan and it's used in a lot of like very avant-garde composition oh. up there up at mills college and uh they do a lot of experimental work but there's a, there's even a, there's a gamelan uh class or a school you can go to uh here in l.a Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so learning all about that. And we, we, we recorded uh, on one song so far. We had a Gamelon Orchestra mm-hmm. play on it. We had a, uh, uh, a uh, composer named Sinta Wulur, who's Indonesian, uh, living in Amsterdam, who's a, a contemporary composer. And she writes for Gamelon and traditional classical instruments so uh the artist uh we, we hired her to do the orchestration of the gamelan on on one song and it's it's just unbelievable to yeah. hear these instruments especially written in uh, in western tuning and in the western scale t- chromatic scale it's really amazing I mean, yeah and we're going to have some traditional uh gamelan playing on on it as well and a malaysian horn section is going to play on a regular like brass uh-huh. a brass horn section uh-huh. is going to play on on it but apparently they have like their own kind of you know flavor hey, you know, yeah. so <laughs> so we'll see there's going to be all all kinds of <laughs> kinds of things going on there and we're looking at a, at a at a punjabi rapper uh-huh. is going to is going to do some 
uh, some wrapping on it. So it's an interesting project, and you know, further down the line, we'll uh, I'll keep you guys posted. Oh, all yeah. right, when, thank when you. there's stuff to hear, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let's do. We'll reshare. Yeah, everybody here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, you know, so I'm working with some uh, new, new singer songwriters here, uh, helping helping them develop develop their material. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about that, too, because there's so many talented people here in L.A. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, to have you on their team, I mean, <laughs> that's, a, that's a great way to start. Uh, <laughs> oh, thanks, thanks. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like I've got to learn all the time, you know. It's, yeah. There's, there's no stopping. There's, exactly. there's no stopping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got to let go a lot of, like, a lot of times what I know mm-hmm. and just write really be in their mindset in their world to really like capture you know mm-hmm. what what they're trying to do and you know it's it's really really so important yeah really part important in the process yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you're not even gonna add your mastery but in their vision you know, yeah <laughs> gotta be able to like let go of the like say the good old the, days they, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that yeah and i know it's hard not to get trapped in that sometimes too uh-huh and uh you gotta be willing to like let that go and and you know, and that's a, that gets around. It's all the technology too, you know, mm-hmm. to be able to work in in applications. Whether you're working in Logic and Ableton Live or the other ones, they have that mindset to work in pattern-based situations mm-hmm. and in chunks and things like that to be able to to think along those lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, you mentioned George Benson too. Oh yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. Uh, Ke- Kevin Shirley uh, <laughs> just did a George Benson album. It's uh, uh, I'm not sure when it's going to be released yet, but George did an album of Fats Domino and Chuck Berry songs. Whew. Ooh. All right. <laughs> but not cool jazz, smooth jazz versions yeah. of these songs. They rocked it out. All right. They rocked it out. And a bunch of the songs, some of the original versions had uh, string arrangements on them and or they wanted to keep that particular vibe and sound. So I did I did strings on a couple of the songs. And then Joe Bonamosa's horn section um, uh, did did uh, did horn arrangements on some songs, too. So it's it's the thing rocks. It, it really rocks. Yeah. Mm. Is it coming out soon? Uh, I don't know the release date. OK. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Again, we'll but reshare keep, that. Like, keep an eye out for that because that's really cool. Because people uh-huh. don't know who George Benson is going to hear this and think, hear his voice <laughs> singing. Uh, oh, when he's singing. Oh, yeah, he's always okay. singing. All yeah, right, Chuck, right. Chuck Berry, Fats Domino. Okay. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yep. Wow. Singing and playing. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that, that keeps you busy pretty much. I mean, it does. It's know, great. It, you know. Wow, and Kiss working with masters. It yeah. Oh, yeah, those. yeah. Those, uh, and the up and coming, and yeah, you're getting yeah. it from all angles. Too. Yeah, got gotta be, got to be in it all, <laughs> yeah. And uh, recently I got, I got turned on to uh, these music festivals that are happening that are all like really like showcases for new artists. Uh-huh. So uh, I, I actually did a workshop at, uh, uh, in Newfoundland, uh, this past fall, uh-huh. uh, at a, at a, it's uh, called Live at Heart. For the last ten years, they've been doing a music festival for new and emerging artists in Sweden called Live at Heart, and they must have like four or five hundred bands play over a period of like a couple of weeks, kind of like a South by Southwest uh-huh. kind of thing. Yeah. They take over a town, mm-hmm. very much like Austin, and mm-hmm. it's all these new acts. So people are flown in uh, to to come see them, book them for festivals and things like that. So they brought one to Newfoundland, to the uh, Bjorn Peninsula. I didn't know nothing about Newfoundland. I got asked to be on the uh, uh, on a on on some of the the panels. Mm-hmm. And they said, "Well, as long as you're going to be there, you want to like do some conduct some workshops." So they said, "We need a, we need somebody to do a songwriting workshop." So I said, "Okay, sure, sure." And said, "And we've got another slot if you want it." So I said to him, "Well, I do this." workshop i've done it with with kids here in la at uh at like summer camps it's a creativity workshop and it's a uh the best way i can put it is it's a it's an immersive uh workshop where you are you participate in exercises that you look at your creativity and using these different what they call somatic body techniques Mm -hmm. to kind of find your blocks and clear them 
so these artists are all, you know, you know, from 18 on up, and you don't really get exposed to stuff like that. So I, mm -hmm. I proposed, I proposed it to them, and mm -hmm. they loved the idea of it. So uh, I, I had literally just about all the artists who were playing at the festival all attend this workshop together, and it was it was amazing. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be doing some more. They uh, they had a, a bunch of uh, uh, people went from a bunch of different festivals who also have uh, workshops and panels along with their music festivals because uh, they have things on the music industry and all that. So having a uh, workshop on creativity mm -hmm. uh, is is a brilliant thing. They want it. Everybody's hungry for new ways to work work with it and, and yes. work through their stuff and their creative blocks and all that. So uh, uh, there's a few. I, they're not final yet, but there'll be, there's a few other that uh, that are on the... Uh, in consideration around around the around the planet here, so oh. we're going to be taking it international, you know. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, so so that's a really fun piece, and it, it gives me uh, a whole other way to work with uh, with artists. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. art of creativity. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And how that can be seen in, in everything too. I mean, oh, absolutely. It applies to everything. everything. It's just <laughs> it's it's for the for the musicians, you know, you can do the same thing uh uh with any group and, yeah. and it's it's actually fun that if you can be in a room with photographers, with uh with visual yeah. artists, video artists, all that hey, together. Audio engineers, hey. Yeah, oh, totally the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is a proposal actually to do it at uh uh, I think it's a workshop that's going to be that's more already oriented up in uh, uh, in Canada. Mm -hmm. There's a recording school up there, and they want to have me do some master classes on the yeah. you know, like the normal kind in the control room, talking about your techniques and what you do. Yeah. And then they said this other thing sounds really interesting, so that would be uh, oh, uh, something that, to do in addition to that. That's that's a must. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that that that's put out there enough for. When you first get into the business, any business, whether it's music business or whatever you get into that you're passionate about, knowing how to get through the hard times with creativity and creating your way out of the situations, you know, like, yeah. okay, you're not getting the breaks that you want this way, do something else, you know, to yeah. start a fire, go, you know, start something going, you know, so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of our yeah. way of doing this with podcasting. Is like, totally. hey, I would, I want to talk to you. I want to know more about your story and how to get to the success that yeah. I want, that whoever is listening wants. I mean, yeah, that's creativity to Absolutely. getting to it, you know, and how to get the information. So yeah. Yeah, that's great that you're. Oh, thanks, thanks. Drilling down on that too. Yeah, yeah. And it's, again, it's part of, of my own involvement. I'm going like, well. Where can I, you know, serve, you know, pass yes, it down serve, yes. and uh, learning about, you know, working with people in all these different ways too, just help serve my work with, with artists too, yeah. because, you know, you, when you work with a variety of mindsets, belief systems, uh -huh. way, pers different perspectives people have about, about the world, where they come from, where they, where they get their, their ideas from. Uh -huh. You know, because depending on what kind of environment you're brought up in, if you're brought up in a, you know, sort of a, uh, you know, sort of a uh, organized religion, uh, Christian world, uh -huh. uh, your source might be God yeah. for what comes through. For someone who's who's coming from a whole different place, they may find it, you know, be coming from the earth or from their heart or things like that. Uh -huh. So it's interesting when people find their source and knowing how to work with it and, yeah. and how to stay in their connect better connection with it all that you know it, it's it, it's fascinating yeah to watch I mean, it in all kind of faith with oh, it the spiritual or whatever you know or earth faith but you the get, faith you get led that this whatever you put into it, it you're going to get it back in a way yeah. or like your your faith in that yeah whether that's with god or with you know in, in everyday things or you know it's, exactly you know, yeah. yeah however you, you, you find it yeah because to me music was always a spiritual uh, uh, <laughs> uh 
you know, thing. I mean, I was brought up Roman Catholic. It was going to be interesting where this conversation yeah. is going. But, you know, I mean, it was music in the church. So that was, there was a connection yeah. there. But I found myself moving out of that after I got old enough and was looking for something else, mm -hmm. you know, uh, spiritually. Uh, and I found it in music. In music, It was yeah. like, oh, yeah, I didn't need that stuff. I, you know, I didn't need, yeah. you know, for myself, uh, you know, working that way, the traditional way that I, I was raised. And it was like, oh, it's... It's on stage. It's in the music. It's that bond between the musicians that I'm playing with, and we're we're connecting together and finding that source of inspiration and our passion and all of that. Mm -hmm. And that was always part of it. So it was like such a natural thing, you know, going, you know, being, being in in that and, and sharing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so staying connected to that's so important, yeah. whatever that is for, for exactly. you and for whatever. If you're lucky is. enough to find it and, and really know and go after it. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah, and then di getting disconnected from it and refinding it. Finding it, it. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Different ways, too. Boy, yeah, it is That's the roller had... coaster, too. Oh, yeah, it, totally. You know, yeah, totally. for everybody. And, yeah, and again, yeah. that's what I, you know... That's why I like talking to people, reading biographies. Everybody has that roller coaster that, yeah, that you're like, oh, when you scratch the surface. So, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. What do you look for in these in a talented young artist? Is it the attitude? Is it the, the actual talent? Or it's the combination? It, it's the combination. Yeah. And, and I, I've learned my lesson over the years. You know, you can... <laughs> see somebody that's got lots of talent but if they're not willing to put the work in do the really the hard work mm -hmm. and and really apply themselves it, it just you know there's no room there's no room there for for uh, success you know you, you just can't it can't happen they got to be willing to be dedicated beyond and those are the things again i heard growing up uh, but you know and then i'm i'm passing i'm doing you know, like you got to know that got to live and breathe what you're doing and when you mm -hmm. think you've done enough that's just the beginning, the beginning. Of, of taking it to the next step that you got to keep bringing it yeah yes yeah. it doesn't happen overnight you know no matter what you're doing you know the, you know whatever it took to get you to where you are you got you got to be willing to be patient enough to to, to stick it out and keep moving through it mm -hmm. true Cause everybody evolves and what you think is like your thing today might not necessarily be connecting the way you want it to and mm -hmm. as you evolve and keep figuring out and connecting with the world in different ways and figuring out how to better express what you're doing in the world at some point if you stay with it you find it you know mm -hmm. but you, you you gotta you gotta work hard Gotta work pay, hard. Yeah, patience. Yeah, yeah. Hard, hard work. times. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because so many people come say, "Okay, I want to record these these five songs," and I'm going like, "Well, okay, you know, we can record the five, but then what are you going to do after the five? And it's like, "Well, not sure yet. I'll, you know, if this is a success, I'll play." No, 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 no. It doesn't work that no way. way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. You you gotta be like, you know, really. I tell everybody, you gotta be writing all the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in the other end of the spectrum, you know, I've heard from folks that have 400 songs. I've written 400 hit songs. And I go like, oh, really? <laughs> 400 hit songs? And, and you know, you're, you're a, a barista yeah. and you got a, 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 a night gig bartending and you got 400 hit songs. How, you know, how, how does that happen? You know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, again, it's like, you know, having a reality check and seeing uh -huh. what's really there and seeing if it's if it's real and if they're willing to work hard and recognize that uh, they might have 400 song ideas, but uh -huh. uh, they've got to have, you know, really masterful, masterfully written songs that are, like, great. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I do the research. It's out uh, there already, yeah. many masterfully written. If you can, <laughs> yeah. you know. And even you said you got to diversify. You yeah. learn how to produce, how to write, compose. You took composing classes, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you learn how to engineer, mix. Uh, yeah, and yeah, it totally. Helps the mm -hmm. entire process yeah i mean ear training for instance i, I didn't know what i was doing at the time but playing in bands growing up we would listen to our favorite records and learn off the record what the parts were 
So you started to be able to focus your ears down, start to extract what your instrument was playing. And, um, you know, that, that's a lot of people don't get that. You know, and I, you know, ear training, of course, when you go into ear training classes, you, you get uh, attuned to that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but a lot, a lot of young artists who have not had any training, but are like, are like really talented, mm -hmm. and they learn what they learn, whether it be like programming or playing and everything like that. The ear training side of it, uh, to be able to go in there and have that level of discernment to figure out what it is that's going on, you know, it takes takes practice. You know, mm -hmm. pull a, years. pull a record apart, um, where you can't just mute tracks and listen to what they did. You know, it's it's a uh, uh, it's it's a great it's a great place to, to train your ear yeah 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 hmm. i mean it's a good skill to utilize for you for the rest of your career i guess right absolutely I mean, you'll need that if you want to continue totally in the music yeah. industry or being a singer or a musician yeah. yeah without thinking about it, that kind of discernment is what you then bring to your own music when yes. you start trying to figure mm -hmm. out how to uh exactly. how to make things happen how to get the results you want and all yeah. that that study, yeah, yeah. Like what I was saying, like of, of what it what you're doing, whether totally. that's you know writing songs or even engineering. It was just like breaking down what I'm listening to in the masters mixes, like that that yeah. helped me get better. Like, oh, okay, how did they place this in the mix before yeah. I even knew how to mix or what knobs were? I was yeah. I was wanting to know that, like. You know, oh, okay. I hear that effect, and like, what is that? And how, you know, so yeah, yeah. You have to be a, a, a yeah, a true student. Yeah, which yeah. we all stay. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and, and always, you know, got to be curious about everything. Uh huh. You know? Yeah, you know, it's really exactly. keeping your curiosity always there. <laughs> uh huh. Oh yeah, and that feeds into creativity and faith. Yeah, yes. totally. So totally. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, oh, Jim. Absolutely. Yes. It was great to be with you guys. Wow. I mean, you know. All right. <laughs> we, we went into the faith and <laughs> technically, and yeah, we went into career. everything on this yeah. one. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Oh, absolutely. Again, Jeff, for being on. Um, thank you, everyone, for uh, listening to the Art of Music Tech podcast. Uh, please leave your comments uh, and rate us on iTunes. Also, download us on, on Spotify, um, iHeartRadio, Podbean. Uh, thank you again from Jeff Bova, Dennis, and me, Fela. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, you guys. For more information of booking 23DB Productions, visit their website at 23dbproductions.com. Like and follow 23DB Productions at Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter for the latest work. <laughs>